Today I'd like to show you how I turned this into this, and I did so using opacity masks inside of Illustrator. And before I show you that, I'm just going to quickly show you this demo file just here. Green circle sitting on top of a red square. If I select both of these, right mouse click and choose Make Clipping Mask, this is the type of masking that most people are familiar with inside of Illustrator. Again, not what we're doing today, just want to remind you of the most common masking method that people use, because when you choose Make Clipping Mask, this is the result that you get. The top object is defining the boundaries now of the visible area of that bottom object. This, of course, has a very hard edge, so it's kind of an all or nothing in terms of transparency just here. But if I show you the logo that we're trying to achieve just here today, and let's zoom in a little bit just here, you can see that we have very fine levels of transparency going on in here. So some areas are fully opaque, some are fully transparent, and a lot of areas are in between. And just so you know here, that's not actually white. I actually have a background layer just here, which is a solid red. If I turn that on and zoom in here, so I'll just turn that off and on a few times, you can see indeed we actually have transparency. And if I go up to view, show transparency grid, and zoom in just here, so you can see all these areas are transparent, solid transparency here, semi-transparent through here. So let's uh, explore how we can achieve that. So let's pop back into our uh, beginning logo just here. And actually out of my desktop here, I have a file that I want to show you. So there's our logo, which I'm seeing just inside of Illustrator just here. That's the masked version. But what I want to show you just here, this Photoshop file here called Mask, if I open that up quickly, this is the original file, which I pulled off of unsplash.com. I'll include the link in the description for that. So I'm actually in Photoshop here, and I'm trying to create an image which I will export out as a JPEG, and that will become the mask that I mask the logo with inside of Illustrator. So a mask inside of Illustrator, the way it works is areas that are white, um, will reveal everything. Areas that are black will hide everything. Uh, areas of gray in between will show semi-transparency. So what I've done here is just uh, add a hue saturation to take out the color. And then I've added a curves adjustment layer, which you can see just here, a very steep curve just here. So if I turn that off and on, my objective here was to have most of the image white, but to have a few very high contrasty areas between the white and the black there to really punch some strong holes in the logo. So here inside of Photoshop, I created this, and then I simply exported out a JPEG, which is what this file is just here on the desktop, and we're going to use that one just now. So again, inside of Illustrator just here, I have my original logo just here made up of some vector art. If I grab the mask JPEG image and just drag it and drop it straight into Illustrator, let's zoom out a little bit just here to see what's going on. So you can see that the mask that I've brought in is huge. This image that I've brought in is huge compared to the graphic, but that's totally fine. So what's great is I'm actually going to shrink this down to be more comparable in size to the logo itself, but you don't have to do that. Um, if, for example, you found a particular part of the JPEG that you like and wanted to use that as a mask, you can absolutely do that. So there's no reason they have to be of equal size. So what I want to do is I want to find a particularly interesting area within the mask within this JPEG to mask this graphic. So for example, I'm liking these three black splotches just here. I'm thinking they could be interesting. So I'm just gonna size this down a little bit. Now I wanna see how these things line up, but of course the image is obscuring the logo. So what I can do with the image selected is in the properties panel just here, I can drop its opacity down a little bit. Very nice, I can see the logo showing through just there. So again, um, you do this to taste of course, but I'm just gonna have those black splotches showing up in those areas on the logo like so. So grab my image, bring its opacity back up to 100%, and we are good to go. So I'm going to select both items just there. You can see, so what I did was just outside on a blank part of my canvas just there, I just clicked and dragged to select both things. With both things selected, I go up to my transparency panel and I choose make mask. And that's just it there, guys. Very nice. Of course, I'll explain a few of those uh, options there to you, but um, for most of you, um, you might already be pretty much done at this point. So let's explore some of those options inside the transparency panel just now. So I have the object selected. 
And there are two thumbnails showing up just here. The first one actually represents the artwork and the second thumbnail represents the mask. So if I wish to actually see the mask itself, clicking on the thumbnail doesn't help us out. I need to hold down Alt or Option and click on that thumbnail. Now we can actually see the masks. So with that visible, I'm free to uh, move it around. I'm holding down the Shift key and I'm just resizing, dropping it into place. And if I just click back on the thumbnail just now, we'll get back to actually seeing our overall mask graphic. So again, Alter Option, clicking on the thumbnail, that will let you actually see the mask. Now, if you wish to temporarily disable the mask, hold down the Shift key and click on the thumbnail. So hold down the Shift key, you can see a big X shows up here over the thumbnail for the mask. And of course, the, uh, the mask disappears. If you hold down the Shift key and click it on again, in that, uh, in that thumbnail just there, uh, it'll come back. So again, shift clicking will hide and show that mask. This little chain icon just in here. So before I click on that, I just want to point out, I've got my selection tool. If I move this around, the mask and the artwork that it is masking move together. No big surprises there, but you may wish to move those pieces of content independently. So if we click on the chain link icon just there, it actually breaks the link between the artwork and the mask. So now uh, if I click back on here and with the thumbnail selected for the artwork, you can see now that I'm actually moving the artwork around, but the mask remains where it is. If I was to click onto the thumbnail for the mask and start to move that around, now you can see that the artwork is actually remaining where it is, but now the mask is actually moving around. So that's a fantastic way to make some um, fine edits there, guys. In this case, I'm just going to click back on the thumbnail for the artwork and then turn the chain icon back on. So now they'll actually move together, which is great. You have a little clipping icon just here. If I turn that off, and if I was to click on the thumbnail for the mask, if I move this up, you can see what's happening just down here. So if I turn the clipping mask on, this is what happens by default, okay? So if you're going after the artwork for the mask, if you're moving that around, uh, wherever it doesn't cover the artwork, it actually, the artwork doesn't actually show through. But if you don't want that to actually happen, you can turn that clipping option off like so. And there's another option in here called Invert Mask. So if I tick that on, it does just that. It inverts the mask. So wherever the mask was white, it becomes black and vice versa. Uh, one last thing left to do here, guys. Um, if you want to actually release the mask, that's what the button just here is released. So if I click on that, it will now get us back to our starting point just here where we have our original artwork just there and then our mask just there. So super quick repeat of the most important part here, guys. Have your Illustrator artwork in place. Bring in a JPEG. Have it covering your artwork. Select both of those. Within the transparency panel, just click on Make Mask. And there you go. And actually, let's just, to prove, let's just prove that this worked nicely. If I go up to my View menu and choose Show Transparency Grid, sure enough, there it is. There's our fully transparent areas. And you can see the semi-transparency coming through just there. Fantastic guys, opacity masks in Illustrator. Hope it helped, cheers.